Hello. This is Grandma Ginny. I'm with RSVP of Dane County, and the foster grandparents in RSVP can sometimes read books on Caribou where they are recorded, and then you can read along with me. The book I'm going to read today is called My Name is an Address. And the thing about it is many of the words are unfamiliar to me, and I'll have a little trouble pronouncing some of them. So maybe you'll be able to help me, or maybe you'll be able to pronounce them better than I can, or maybe you'll learn how to pronounce some new words too. Let's see. Here we go. The name of this book is, my name is an address. And the author is Akua Men's Moses. The illustrator is Carolyn Cofield Menz. You are not lost, you are not alone. A GPS system navigates you to where you are going, but your name could lead us to what you are. Oh, to what you are looking for. What's in a name? A Kua Menz uses the alphabet letters to answer that question. She opens a window into her family history, culture, language, geography, and more. Look through Akua's actual family photos, mother's artwork, father's artifact collection. My name is an address comes to life and touches your heart. Exit the story by finding your own Akan name. Also, return when you need to feel connected. Ultimately, be inspired to find your own address. Hmm, I know my own address. I'm not sure what this book is going to tell me. Now I'm going to try to make it easier to see. Okay, here we go. My name is an address. And here's a nice picture and all oh, beautiful fabrics, stamps. Are you ready to open a new window? Tokuna or Tokura window. Can you use all the letters from A to Z to explain the story of your name? This page here tells all of the kind of business stuff about the book. Most of it we already read, like who wrote it and stuff. And this page is called the dedication page. And this is in memory, in loving memory of Carolyn Cofield Menz, my mother. That means this is the mother of the person telling us the story today. And this is a note from the person who wrote the story. A note from Ekua. Akwaba, welcome to the ABC story of my name. Did you know that a name includes history, geography, and migration? Language, culture, and heritage are also linked to a person's name. I chose to use the letters of the alphabet to show how wide and deep names can go. My life began in Warrensburg, Missouri, but that is not my full address. I am the second child of an immigrant and an African-American. My name is an address, features my family's my father's family line. Unfortunately, much of my mother's African ancestry is unknown. Family lines were stripped from enslaved Africans as they were involuntarily and forcibly transported all over the world. Slavery, war, trade, colonialism, and other world events changed families forever, including mine. I am proud that I can use my first and last name to trace my father's ancestors back to Ghana, West Africa. I hope to discover more information about my mother's African origin. She wholeheartedly celebrated our Ghanaian heritage and the cultures of the world. I call myself the designer of this book 
because the handwriting and drawings were painted by my remarkable mother. So a kua is the writer, but remember we said the illustrator, that was her mother. The illustrations are a collage of my parents' treasures. The words are my way of explaining how they fit together and shape the person I am today. As you read, I hope you enjoy our photographs and artifacts. I hope you feel my parents' love and guidance. I hope you learn some of our culture and traditions. I hope you read now. Oh, you read how I embrace my name and identity. I hope you gain tools for facing challenges. I hope you get inspired to research your own name. I hope you write your story before someone else shares it for you. Tell your authentic story. The world needs to hear your voice. Uh, one thing I want to say is the person who writes this, Ekua, um, has a very close connection to people from other countries. Um, her father um, had come over here from Ghana. So um, we, we know that she has a way to find out a lot about where he is from. Now, my great, great, great grandparents came over here 200 years ago. So the names in my family are mostly not real cultural kind of names. What about you? A is for address. I am American, but people are confused when they see my name written or hear it spoken. Where is your name from? Some ask. My name leads to the continent of Africa. Here's Africa. B is for born. My father was born in Cape Coast, Ghana. He lived in a two-story compound house. It is in a busy neighborhood called Kawanapadu, Kawanapadu, I think. Our extended family still lives there. Generations of family pictures are hung high on the walls. And this picture says Albion Mendez II, Georgina Isabella, Isabella Sagal, my grandmother's family home. So these are, I think, pictures of her grandparents. C is for change. Some coastal Ghanaians were baptized and renamed when enrolled in the British education system. Albion means old England. Men's may be linked to a British Royal Navy Admiral who patrolled the Gold Coast. From our family's indigenous, oh, our family's indigenous name is Anamua. We chose, well, we choose, it says, we choose to keep men's surname because it can be traced back to our family. So her family generations ago had the name Anamua, but um, when the British came into their country, they gave him a new name and that is Men's. There are people with the same last name in the cities of Cape Coast, Ada and Salt Pond. Men's is my maiden name. Your maiden name is the name that you have before you're married if you're female. Um, because the tradition in this country, although it's changing, is that many wives take their husband's last name and the children all have the last name that was the, the um, father's. So this girl child has men's as her last name because that was her father's name. And here's the family lineage. This is Albion Men's the first, his, the great grandfather. And before that, there was a James Felix men's and he is not pictured. And this is Albion Mens the second, my grandfather, she says, and Albion Mens the third, also called Papa Kojo Anamua. Papa Kojo Anamua, that's a nice peppy name. And this is Salt Pond, Ghana, a mansion built by Albion Mens, this man here. Albion Mens is one of the men that helped to build that mansion. Wow, that's quite a family story already. With Papa and Mama, D is for distinct. Mama and Papa gave me a name that is distinct from the names of most people. I am thankful they decided to follow a cultural tradition. 
It is a name that is common, common in Papa's country. So her name comes from her father's country. E is for examples. Ekua is my first name and leads to my ancestor's country. My middle name, Ruth, leads to my Christian religion. I have two cousins with the same first name, but their parents chose a more traditional Fante spelling, Ekua. My grandfather suggested the spelling of my name, and here it is written out. Look how beautiful that looks. Ekua. Ruth. Happy birthday, Aikua. We love you. And there's a sticker book all for Aikua. F is for facts. I am Fante. Fante people mainly live along the coastal regions of Ghana. Tourists visit the forts and dungeons, dungeons to see where the Dutch, Portuguese, and British colonizers kept enslaved people. They want to learn how Africans were captured tortured and exported. They wonder how their families were impacted by the slave trade. They want to discover if their roots lead to Ghana. And this is uh, the grandma's courtyard. That's a little hard to see there. And there's the coast. They're looking right out at the Atlantic Ocean. And then this is visitors. And this is called the door of return. Um, and that leads back out to the ocean. And this is some shackles. So I think these went around your ankles when you were in the boat and then this was anchored to the wood somewhere or another. G is for gold. Ghana is in West Africa. It was called the Gold Coast until the end of British rule. Dr. Kawami Nkrumah announced independence on March 6, 1957. I am blessed to be called more specifically a Ghanaian American. Like I could say I'm a German American and uh, Ekua is a Ghanaian American. H is for hope. My father is the oldest of nine children. He left Ghana with the national track team to train in America. He hoped to get a higher education and run in the Olympics. My dad, met my African-American mother in college. They had so much hope for their family and made faith, love, and giving a priority on our, in our daily lives. So here's Albion Mentz III and Carolyn Ann Cofield. There they are getting married. I don't know what year. And this is um, maybe a passport, I'm not sure. And this is when they graduated from college. And this is, looks like he's got some native clothes on. This is kind of more US style. And this is athletic style. Okay, I is for identity. My identity has, was shaped by my parents' actions. Their engagement with family and community gave me the answers to my questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where do I belong? How can I make a difference in the world? Here's Ghana. Here's an international club. Most universities have an international club because the people in the university towns like to meet people from other parts of the world. J is for joy. Does this look like a smiling joy? It does to me. Tremendous joy filled my heart when my dad would visit my school. He played traditional instruments and taught classic games. We passed around cultural artifacts. The students asked questions about my name and how my family left Ghana. They asked my dad to describe life in his country. K is for kind. Children teased me and called me Hakuna Matata. Their singing and laughing made me feel like I did not fit in. I felt lonely, embarrassed, and ashamed of my name. My parents talked to me and helped boost my confidence. They told me to be kind and remember our family values. And here it says, have a good day, little love, Papa and Mama. There's 
Aikua with her dad. And here she's kind of uh, smiles and tears. Oh, and here she is in school. She must have made like a big dollar statue or something. That's fun. L is for legacy. In the evening, Mama and I would paint and craft pictures together. Adding fabric helped make the art look more authentically African. She showed me how to learn from my mistakes and be a creative teacher. Her art is a piece of colorful legacy. So this is probably the fabric that they added over the silhouette here. M is for meals, rice, I think dates, eggs, probably nuts. M is for meals. My name is also from a rich cooking culture. Foods are made to bring families together. Ghana is famous for fufu, jollof rice, fried plantains, meat stews, and spicy sauces. We make these dishes in America, but it is sometimes hard to find foods, spices, and tools to make the exact mouth-watering meals. A kua. N is for name. Teachers always mispronounced my name and asked if I had a nickname. Because basically people are lazy about learning new words in their mouth, it feels difficult. I told them I did not and politely taught them how to say my name. I would gracefully correct them when they pronounced, practice the pronunciation. I like my name, it is me. I do not want my name changed or erased. O is for observation. A naming ceremony took place eight days after I was born. And outdooring is a time for giving blessings and gifts for the baby. Family and friends were asked to dress in white. Dad wanted our Missouri friends to observe that culture starts at birth and travels with us. Now, this is another little boy's outdooring. A bofra, a bofra, baby. Oh, uh, yeah. P is for people. I am linked to the past, present, and future stories of Ghana. My name and actions represent the country and its people like a travel commercial or a mobile billboard. So here's Ghana and here's Kansas City where she grew up. And this says a trip of a lifetime. So they went to Ghana. I can't tell you what year, but they did. So they went from Kansas City and they had to go all the way to Rome. And then they got on a different plane to go down to Cape Coast, Ghana. So this is the part of Africa that they went to visit. And then to go back, they took another airplane to London. And that London back to Can that airplane from London back to Kansas City. Pretty exciting. Mobuku. Uh, Holy mackerel, I bet you they would laugh at me if I tried to read that. Mema Woyake. Good morning. Q is for questions. My parents knew I would have a lot of questions. Mom created homemade books for me to learn about Ghana. The pages included the English and Fante language. We read those books together over and over. I still ask questions and try to learn more about our language, history, and culture each day. Nifi, my house. R is for roots. My family placed a golden Sankofa bracelet in a time capsule. Mama buried it under a tree on my first birthday. It reminds us to keep growing where we are planted. My roots began long before the slave trade and colonization. They go back to the time when her, her father's people in Ghana made their own government and their own rules. S is for symbol. 
in Ghana, Sankofa means to go back to fetch it. This is a bird with something precious in its beak that it's pulling up from behind itself. It is an Andinkra symbol of wisdom, learning from the past and building for the future. A symbol is often printed on fabric carved into wood and more. So here's the carving, here's the print. Uh, yeah, it's peeking around here a little bit. T is for treasure. Mama and Papa taught us to value the art of Ghana. We have unique handmade artifacts from our visits. The decorations in my home point to an address, just like my name does. So look at all these things they have. I don't know what they are. This might be a drum and a handbag or purse or wallet or something, bracelets. Oh my. You is for unique. There are many girls in the world named Akua, but I am unique. My hobbies, talents, experiences, goals, and achievement make me one of a kind. Looks like basketball and saxophone, probably. V is for variety. There is peace between the many tribes in Ghana. Language, food, religion, and festivals vary by region. The Ashanti tribe spells and says my name differently, Akua. Uh, like I told you, I'm not very good at pronunciation here. W is for Y. Akua identifies the day of the week I was born and my gender. I am a girl born on Wednesday. Babies born on Wednesday are the famous and fearless ones. Ask Quenku Anansi, the spider. I don't know that person. But here, Wednesday, Ekua Ruth. My goodness. X is for X factor. In algebra, X factor is the unknown. The variable in Ghana is opportunity. Hard work and perseverance are expected. The village helped me to fly higher and higher. They remind me to get back up again when I struggle. The cultural belief is your success is our success. So I can't see a lot of detail in those pictures. I would love to see this book in person, wouldn't you? Why is for yes, as elders say at the outdooring, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. I always strive to be honest. Life and a good family name are fragile. I choose to handle both with care. Z is for zest. My grandpa is 102 years old and lives life with zest. He likes to crack a witty joke, give a loving smile, or unexpectedly sing an inspirational song. I am proud to represent him, my family, and the country of Ghana, and the African ancestors who paved the way for me. My name is an address. What is your address? Boy, wouldn't you like to know that? Oh, and then this page, has a, a pronunciation guide here, uh, but it's a little hard to see. This is Iquia, A-Q-U-A, Iquia. And here, A-K-U-W-A-H or A-K-U-A is Iquia. So there's different pronunciations even uh, in their native language, their first language. Sankofa, learn from the past to build the future. And then there's a website you can go to, akua.com, and see what your Ghanaian name would be. And this talks about Carolyn Cofield Menz. She was born in Hobbs, New Mexico. 
On January 1973, she and Albion Menz III were united in marriage in Portales, New Mexico. They moved to Warrensburg, Missouri in 1974. In 1975, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and survived a breast cancer diagnosis in 1996. Mrs. Menz refused to let it define her life or impact her gift of giving and service. And this talks about her too. It uses her name, Carolyn. Carolyn was also an accomplished and award-winning artist with work displayed, sold, and distributed worldwide. She often stated her talent was a natural gift enlarged by academic study. She earned both her Bachelor of Arts in Art and a Master of Arts in secondary education from Eastern New Mexico University in Portales, New Mexico. You know, I made a mistake. This is not about the author. This is about the author's mother. This is about Carolyn Cofield Menz, the person the book is dedicated to. And here's a little bit more of her. She was an important academic advisor at Central Missouri State University for 22 years. Carolyn worked with thousands of students in this role and as a student organization advisor or co-advisor with her husband. Serving the Association of Black Collegiates, Harambi and Sisters of Ujima, an organization she founded and created. She also served as ver on various committees and assisted with university initiatives. She received numerous accolades, awards and honors for her work in student affairs and engagement. And this is written by Afua Sam. I think that might be Akua's brother, but I don't know for sure. And here's about the person who wrote the book. Akua, I think we said it was. Akua Men's Moses as a Bachelor of Arts in Elementary and Early Childhood Education from the University of Central Missouri. She has a Master of Arts in Teaching and Learning, Elementary Reading from Nova, South, Nova Southeastern University. She is a published International Literacy Association author, learning alongside educators and family in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is their 20th year in education. Whoops, oh, I just did it wrong. I hope I can get back there. Well, I think I can't. Um, so that's the end for today. I think that's a very interesting book. Like I said, I hope I can see it in person someday. Uh, and I wanna find out where I, my name and my family came from too. But I think it's part of Northern Europe not part of Africa. Have a happy day. Enjoy your name, even though sometimes kids have trouble saying it and people like to tease. Every name is a beautiful name. Every age is a wonderful age and every kid is a terrific kid, just like you. Bye for now.